Hello there, welcome to Liam's Library. It's not very often I start one of these reviews with me talking about the movie version of a story before I talk about the book version. But that's what I feel like I should do with this week's story. So this week's story is another Stephen King. Halloween's over, man, so I, I thought I'd just... I know I promised you the howling, which is going to come. It'll be one of my longer reviews. So until then, I thought we'd pass the time with continuing through Night Shift. We're, we're three quarters of the way through that bad boy, and um, we're making progress. And we pointed out some really cool and nifty things. Now we're up to a story which... I can't say I don't like it, um, but it brings a lot of memories back, all sorts of different memories, and we're going to talk about them today. So, The Lawnmower Man by Stephen King. When I say that to you, what do you think of? Now, I'll tell you what I think of, of course. When I was little, Stephen King movies were everywhere. So, as, as soon as I saw It in 1990, I would have been six years old, it was a new release. Uh, the miniseries, of course, but it was brought out in VHS. As soon as I saw that, I was addicted. Children of the Corn, a couple of years later, Sleepwalkers. I have a, I have a million examples for you. Um, you know, Salem's Lot, Carrie, all these movies that were just at my fingertips and at my local video store for me to watch. Now, I've told you on this channel that one of the first books I ever read of Stephen King's was Night Shift. So I read it and Night Shift more than anything I tried to read Carrie, I tried to read The Dark Half, I was really, really young man, I wasn't even close to being a teenager yet, so the only things I could manage was to read it over and over, and read the short stories in Night Shift. Now the first one I read, probably wasn't Children, well it was Children of the Corn, we'll, we'll come up to that soon, because I'd seen the movie, and I was really happy with the short story, but another one is The Lawnmower Man. Now, as a kid, me and my brother used to watch the movie. So before I was reading um, much Stephen King, I'd seen the movie The Lawnmower Man with Pierce Brosnan and Jeff Fahey, or Fahey, however you say it. Now, that movie is about uh, a man with some level of autism, and he's the local lawnmower man in this neighbourhood, and a doctor lives in his neighbourhood, played by Pierce Brosnan, decides to use um, these drugs that he's been um, fucking with and gives it to this autistic guy in the neighbourhood, played by Jeff Fahey, the lawnmower man, and he starts becoming really brilliant in his mind. He starts becoming super smart. And then supernatural stuff starts happening. Eventually, it becomes this virtual reality world and he starts killing people with his mind and disappears into cyberspace and Pierce Brosnan has to... Stop him from killing everyone while trying to save his life because he's the one who did that uh, did this to him, turned him into this super intelligent, more than a man, superhuman thing. Excuse me. And it ends with Pierce Brosnan being successful. And I remember this one little bit. Um, at the very end of the movie, The Lawnmower Man, Job, his name is, he says, when every single... Uh, phone in the world rings, you know I'll be returning, or some shit like that. And at the end, the phone rings in Pierce Brosnan's office, and it rings down the hall, and then it rings fucking next door, and then the camera goes out, and the phones are ringing all over planet Earth. That's cool. The movie has a hundred problems. Um, some very dated CGI now, but it used to scare me as a kid, and the acting was cool, the story was original, The Lawnmower Man, and... The copy I had as a kid, it said Stephen King's The Lawnmower Man. So I thought, well, one day I'm going to get a hold of that book. I didn't realise it was a short story until I got Night Shift off my Aunty Debbie and read Children of the Corn and then read The Lawnmower Man. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I can just have a coughing fit and just stop mid-review. Um, so I read The Lawnmower Man. Now, I was horrified. I was pissed off. I didn't really understand what was going on. The Lawnmower Man in here is a 100% completely different story. There is not one character in there that is in the film. So, I'm like, oh, I wanted to read the story about, you know, the Lawnmower Man and the, and the, and the computer games and the, and the murder and the bullshit. Um, instead, what I got was The Lawnmower Man by Stephen King. Now, the original story by Stephen King is about this lazy fella named Mr. Parkett. 
Now, he used to have his own lawn mower and he used to take pride in his lawns. Um, so, but one afternoon, while he was mowing the front lawn, the neighbour's cat ran under his mower and got turned into a whole ball of just um, blood and flesh and fur. And the neighbourhood, uh, the neighbour's daughter or whatever, saw it and threw up in her lap. Disgusting. It's told in this really quick, the story's written in this really quick, sort of direct, fuck you kind of a way. You know, it's a very short story. So, he, he decides he'll sell his mower and he'll just pay someone to do it. He'll pay some kid around the neighbourhood to mow his lawn. He's so lazy, this doesn't happen for ages. And then at, our, at the beginning of our story, he's going outside because the baseball's on today. Or sorry, the softball's on today. God, I hope I'm right. I'm from Australia. We don't really follow either. Um, he goes out on his porch and has a look at how bad his lawns are getting. And he's like, well, shit, I've got to do something about it and I've got to do about it today. So he gets on the phone, looks through the yellow pages and finds, sorry, the phone directory and finds uh, a lawn mowing place. And it doesn't have, like, the name isn't anything peculiar or anything. The phone number's nothing peculiar. He rings it up. This very um, posh lady answers the phone and says, yes, please, your address, and rah, rah. And then uh, he goes and sits on the couch and sort of falls asleep. And he's awoken later by a knock. By a knock at his door, and this man in sort of overalls and this shirt and this huge big beer belly is standing at the door. And uh, he's like, I'm here to mow your lawns, you know. And uh, our main character's like, yeah, cool, no worries. Um, he wasn't expecting this kind of a guy. Like, his belly's just stuck right out in front, and he's just, like, kind of grinning like a bit of a maniac. And, he's, and he comes into our main character's house and starts sort of saying, yeah, great, wicked, yeah, awesome. Like, you know, we'll mow the front lawn, wicked, you know. Bloody, by Circe's, we'll do it. And our main character just starts to get this really weird feeling from our lawnmower man because he's just, he's very strange. He's just just really grinning and sweating and... And the things that are coming out of his mouth are not nearly normal, but they're not really normal. And uh, he's, and then he brings out his mower when he goes back out the front. And this thing, the way Stephen King describes the actual lawnmower, it's this, you know, one of them um, mowers that has that sort of turn wheel at the back that will drive it, but you sort of steer it, and just a big steel grating on the front, you know, just like a, a pair of ravenous langolier teeth chewing up the grass. But this thing's a monster, like glinting in the sun. It makes the guy feel sick to even like kind of look at it. He goes inside and the lawnmower man starts doing his business and he hears the lawnmower like start up. And this thing's just, sounds like a Harley Davidson. is just like tearing through a fucking forest with a chainsaw. It's that fucking loud. And spewing all this smoke out. And then so our main character comes out the front and fucking just stops dead in his tracks because our lawnmower man isn't pushing the lawnmower. The lawnmower is driving itself and it's mowing the lawn on its own. But it's just, it's this just buzzsaw maniac grass chewing thing that just, just makes you feel insane to look at. It's just there's something wrong here. That's fucking, God, he must have been pissed off his ass when he wrote this, uh, Stephen King. And then, but that's not the biggest shock. The biggest shock is the lawnmower man. He stripped off all of his clothes. This big, fat, white guy with his ass disgustingly in the air is crawling along behind the lawnmower, eating the grass with his like, like with ravenous fucking just love of the grass, and his stomach is swelling as it's eating all the grass like a lawnmower bag would. And his teeth are stained green, and he's trotting along behind it disgustingly. Our main character can only look in horror at what the fuck is going on. And then suddenly something even worse happens. A mole, you know, them animals, we don't get them over here, but moles, they burrow in the ground around the place, darts out of a little hole and dashes in front of the lawnmower. Now the lawnmower on its own starts chasing this mole and runs it down in a big bone and blood and fur bath in the, in the beautiful summer sunshine. It's that kind of a story, you know, the way Stephen King's telling you about it. It's like, what a beautiful summer day and this is going on. And the lawnmower man, he runs behind the lawnmower too on his hands and feet so he can eat up all the scraps of fucking dead mole that's been shot out of the back of the lawnmower. Our main character sees all this and damn fucking passes out right on the spot. Just fucking blacks out. Then he's getting shaken awake and he thinks it's his wife. Like fucking surely what was just happening is just a fucking nightmare I was just having. But it's the lawnmower man standing over him with his big fucking green teeth and uh, 
He's still naked, and the guy realises horribly that where the guy's dick is hanging down in between his legs, all his pubic hair is green like fucking grass. Um, not pubes at all. Fuck. I knew this would be a hard review. I didn't even want to do it today, but it's next in line, this fucking story. You know, I'll leave all my integrity at the door as a book reviewer, just telling you what's in this fucking story. <laughs> nah, it's great fun. It's great fun. So the lawnmower man is waking our main character up, Mr. Parquet. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You know, like, just chatting to him about stuff and talking in this strange way and he's bringing up sacrifices. And he's saying, you know, some people, when they find out what, what's really going on, you know, they don't really like it, but this is good for business. It's good for the boss. And, uh, you know, our main character's like, the boss? Like, who's the boss? And he's like, oh, come on, man. I thought you would have figured it out. You know, sacrifice... Um, what you just saw, um, I work for the, I work for Pan. Pan is the man, you know? So, I'll get to Pan in a minute. But, like, is he working for the devil? And thing is, he has, like, his feet are, like, cloven. So that's just a dead giveaway, you know, the devil. Um, but there's a bit more to it than that, and we'll get to that. But this happens, and so, the, you know, the, the main character is just trying to go, yep, to the Lord, my man, sure, sounds good, buddy, as he's inching towards the kitchen and trying to get the telephone so he can bring the police. And the, and the Lord, my man, says something else and then just goes, waves and heads back out so he can mow the rest of the lawn. And now our main character, he's like, holy fuck, he brings the police. And he's like, listen, there's someone here that's... And the policeman's like, yeah. He's like, what the fuck do I say? Um, there's like a fucking grown man naked eating woodchucks on my front fucking lawn. He's like, no, no, no um, indecent exposure. There's, there's someone here and the cops aren't even that fast. They're like, okay, and where are you? He's like, no, he's fucking naked like my neighbours. And then it's like, the cop is like, I can't really hear you, mate. Can you repeat that? And then he realises how loud the lawnmower sound is getting from out the front. It's becoming deafening. Like, it's driving him insane with the, the mad roarings of the fucking lawnmower. Then, then the front door smashes open and the lawnmower comes roaring in on its own, but followed by the lawnmower man. He's like, you shouldn't have done that, buddy. Should have kept it in-house, you know. You know, we can do this the easy way. Just show me your sharpest knife. We can get this sacrifice thing over and done with. And the guy's like, no, please, please, please. Putting chairs in front of him and shit. And the lawnmower is in front of the lawnmower man with them big spinning fucking metal teeth just kicking furniture to the side in splinters. And, he, and he's, he's had enough, right? So he turns around and he runs for the front door, our main character. Or maybe, yeah, no, the front door um, past. Yeah, it has to be because he runs across the front lawn. Maybe it's the back lawn. Anyway, he's, he's running across the freshly mowed grass and he gets off the porch and he, and he really goes for it, you know, this poor middle-aged fella. But there's been too many beers. There's been too many afternoon naps and he's just not making enough progress and he can feel the lawnmower at his fucking heels it's 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 a bit of an icky story it makes you feel like imagine if you were getting chased by this big thing with metal teeth like you would want it not to even clip you and it'd fucking take chunks out horrifying <laughs> it's a little suspenseful so that man runs off the porch as the lawnmower flies off the porch behind him and then eventually gets him and runs over him and cuts him into pieces as he fades out seeing the lawnmower and the lawnmower man just watching it all go down. Then we have this quiet little ending, like it stops there. A couple of hours later, the police rock up, because not only did he call the police, the neighbours did too. There's like a naked man chasing Mr. Parquet around the front lawn. Please come and see what the F is going on. And so they do, and they're like, man, what the fuck is going on with the world? Like, And they're just kind of saying, well, someone said maybe it was just Parkhead himself. He went loopy sitting around the house drinking all day and he's running around naked. It's like, no, no, no. But then they find Mr. Parkhead. They find, the, they find half of him there and they find the other half in the drinking fountain, in the, in the bird fountain out the back. And they've got a doctor with him too who has a bit of a, he loses his lunch like, Jesus fucking Christ. And the two cops are just sort of like, well, man, I heard the other day that something, this, something like this happened and something like that happened. Could you imagine someone chasing you through your house with a lawnmower? Ah, oh, this crazy fucking world takes different kinds. And then it ends like that. We fade out with a beautiful summer day and the smell of fresh cut grass on the air. The end. <laughs> Fuck it. That's, that's terrible. Only Stephen King could write something like that and just publish it. And, but let's, let's talk about it. Think of the movie I explained when you first clicked on this video. Doesn't sound anything like that short story I just described, does it? Nothing like it. Now, down the track... Probably not long after, Stephen King asked for his name to be removed from that movie. 
because it had nothing to do with him. They simply stole a title. And But it's quite bizarre because it used to say a Stephen King, from the mind of Stephen King, the lawnmower man. So, like, whoever did that, like, they sh- I'm, I don't know if he sued them. When it comes to money, Stephen King's a bit quiet, and that was back before the internet and shit, so it would have been pretty hard to find out what sort of happened there, but I know he had his name removed from the movie, and I thought he sued, but I'm, I might be fucking making that up, but Stephen King wouldn't be fucked around, you know what I mean? Even back then, like, hang on a second, like, I didn't write that. You can't use my name. He'd fucking take, he'd take the piss out of you if you tried to rip him off. I guarantee it. So there's a couple of things I'll just say before we we knock this on the head. There is a comic book of The Lawnmower Man written years ago, and it's actually a comic book of this. Not the fucking weird video game one. It's a comic book of the Stephen King story with the man and the lawnmower and the blood sacrifices and the eating of the grass. (laughs) Could be a poem. Um, What else? So, okay, I'll just quickly say this. I've written two stories because I read this. So, you know, I write my, my stupid shit, my, my, sh- my horror short stories, because I love to write and I love to read. Um, I've written a story called The Swamp about a guy who lets his weeds fucking get too much and this fucking creature actually evol- uh, yeah, evolves in his backyard, out of, in, the, in his backyard swamp, and then fucking he, him and his little baby have to battle this monster. That's my story called The Swamp. It's got a million holes in it. But I got the idea from the beautiful summer day setting of The Lawnmower Man. And I also stole it again years later when I wrote a short story called Creepy about a little kid that has to battle the creepy crawly in his backyard pool. Full of holes, a stupid little short story. But fuck, when you read The Lawnmower Man, you have fun. Something is killing you. Fuck, who knows why. Let's put Satan in there. So the reason I say that is because when this main character asks the lawnmower man, like, but who's your boss? The lawnmower man says, I work for Pan. I thought that would have been obvious. Now, Pan isn't God or the devil, or is he? So I know there's an old book, but I didn't, I've never read it. Um, so I, I did a quick Google. Now, I only did this because Stephen King always talks about the great God Pan. And I know it's a, it's a short book by Arthur Machen or Mackin or however you fucking say it. Written in like the eight, in like 1880, 1890, fuck, somewhere like that. Around the time, people were writing really cool original shit. And it's this horror story about this doctor who fucks around in, in, in this young girl's head so that we can um, get access to the spiritual side of the world. But what happens is he gets the attention of the great god Pan who like maybe impregnates her. And then all this supernatural shit happens and all this really horrible black magic stuff, like, as if fucking, like, and I've only read the synopsis, so I have to do a review on the great god Pan now, but I kind of knew that anyway, and the story that I've talked to you about by Stephen King, the novel Revival, is just heavily laced with the great god Pan, you know, and so it's funny, so, you know, this lawnmower man's killing people, sacrificing to the devil, whatever, apparently Arthur Matcham, when he wrote the great god Pan, he was, he was, he was he was writing it in Wales, something to do with his experiences there with the occult or trying to find the devil. It was like some article or some other story he wrote. But so it's almost like Stephen King, instead of just saying God or the devil, he said Pan just to confuse your ass. So if you read it in the 70s and you read the great God Pan, you might have made that connection. But I definitely wouldn't have made that connection until he'd written Revival. Um, you know, and he's pointed it out a couple of other times um, in other books back in the day. So that's it. That's it. I'm going to leave it there because, like, I'm glad I had a lot to say about this review. Because if all I was going to do was tell you about the fucking eight-page short story, The Lawnmower Man by Stephen King, and not all the stuff that happened around it and how I felt, it would be a really fucking short review and it would seem kind of silly. But my recommendation is read it and, and even go see the movie that isn't based on the short story. But it's still worth a watch, and it's movie history, and it's literature history, and uh, books, man, books. So take care of one another. Like and subscribe. Hey, watch some really good movies. Read even better fucking books. And don't take any shit from anyone. See ya.